Welcome to another episode of WTF Cinema. Today's film is proof that not every idea is a good one, and not every film deserves to be made. Today's film is about a woman with teeth in her vagina. Exactly. Because of the nature of this film, it would be impossible to do this review without referencing genitalia. And I thought about coming up with a cute euphemism that I could use throughout the entire review, and then I realized, no. Let's be adults about it, huh? I'm going to use the word vagina. I'm going to use the word penis. I'm not going to use them in a vulgar way. I'm going to use them to describe the parts of the body we're talking about. Let's all try to be adults about it, shall we? With that out of the way, let's go ahead and dive right in to teeth. We open with this beautiful view of nuclear reactor stacks near a house. Not sure why. Don't really know why we spend so much time looking at them. They show up in a lot of shots. Nuclear power is never referenced in this movie. It never comes up. Maybe we're supposed to inf infer that uh, the nuclear generator caused her mutation, except we learn that that's not her house, that's the house that her mother's marrying into, so she didn't grow up there. I don't know. Who am I to question how you make a vagina with teeth movie? We then cut to two young children in a pool together. Now we're quickly informed that these two children are about to become step-siblings. And the boy reacts to that news as I think any boy would in that situation. He asks to see the girl's vagina. Then, suddenly, mysteriously, the boy's finger is cut. Now, we know the premise of this film. So we know that he was fingering the little girl and her vagina bit his finger. Do you remember... When you were a little kid, say about eight years old, and you fingered a girl for the first time, you know, right in front of your dad and her mom. Ah, <sighs> those were the days. After the opening credit sequence, we see that our little girl is all grown up. Her name is Dawn, and she's a very important member of the abstinence movement at school. She seems cute, self-assured, and possibly retarded. She talks to a bunch of kids about abstinence and how it's important to keep your special gift for that special someone. And this particular abstinence movement believes in wearing abstinence rings so that everybody can see that you have taken a purity pledge. I'm all in favor of this, because then you know which chicks not to hit on, am I right, guys? <laughs> I mean, um, it's laudable how these young women have taken control of their sexuality and have decided that they want to save it for that special someone. Whew. I think I pulled that one off. When she meets a new boy for the first time, the movie very subtly lets us in on the fact that there might be romantic tension between the two of them. He starts school with us tomorrow. Hi. Seriously? Like, I didn't add that music in. That's the movie. Obviously, the movie wants to be camp, except it's only camp in, like, one or two situations. And that's not how camp works. You can't be, like, serious, dramatic film about teeth and a vagina. Camp, 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 serious, dramatic film about teeth in a vagina. Y you can't do this. You have to have some consistency if you have any hope of maintaining any kind of audience. We now cut to our sex ed class, where the teacher very firmly explains to us what a penis is, how it works. We see diagrams of penises. But when it comes time to teach about the vagina, he stutters. He can't say the word vagina. The school board has placed a giant sticker over the picture of the vagina because it's dubbed obscene. A, a kid in the class actually asks, why is the vagina considered obscene and not the penis? But instead of actually getting an answer to this perfectly decent, legitimate question that everybody in the audience should be asking, the kid's just laughed at and obscene moves on. 
Okay. I, I, I get that sex ed in schools is controversial now, but I don't think in reality there's a single sex ed class that only teaches about penises and then goes, oh, but vaginas? No, 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 we can't. Because if you could only teach 50% of the material for the class, wouldn't you just not have the class at all? I, I should do research and like call school districts and stuff, but I'm pretty sure that there is not a sex ed class in the world that goes penis, 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 penis. Ask your mom about your vagina. Where does the pollen go? While Dawn is the epitome of purity and sweetness, her stepbrother is apparently the Antichrist. Don't believe me yet? You'll see. Now, the movie makes absolutely no attempt to keep track of the progress of time. So, days, weeks, months later, Dawn and her purity pals are up for a hike in the woods. And they walk by this nice lagoon setting with a waterfall and a cave back in the distance. And we're informed that this cave is where all the young people in town go to have sex. It's the sex cave. And that makes perfect sense. I mean, why would you want to do something as cliched as the back seat of your car where you could, you know, control the temperature and there's soft surfaces? when you could totally be getting it on, laying down on a hard stone surface with insects, and later we even see crabs walking around in this cave. Not the sexual crabs, the actual crabs. Why wouldn't you go there for sex? It sounds delightful. Now, it's revealed that Don's stepbrother only participates in anal sex. Now, he doesn't know why because he shows us that he can't remember where the little bite on his finger came from. It's still there. Apparently it was bad enough it practically needed stitches, but he can't remember where it came from. He was like eight. I remember crap from when I was eight. He was eight. He was fingering a girl that he was in love with, we learn later. And, by the way, probably his first time fingering a girl since he's eight. So, Eight years old, first time fingering your girl, daddy loves, the girl's vagina then bites his finger, which needs stitches. And he can't remember any of that. That's not really traumatic enough to block it out. It's a cut finger. It's not like he lost a limb or something. Why can he not... Re any one of those facts would make it a memorable occasion, and yet all of them happen at once. And okay, fine. He can't remember that the vagina bit him. Why is he insistent on only doing anal sex then? I would get it if he was a little trepidatious. See, he had this blocked out memory, but subconsciously he knew that... Da -da -da. Except he stone cold refuses. He is adamant. And additionally, where did he find a chick that was okay with only doing anal? Most girls are, are barely willing to even consider the possibility. And this one is perfectly okay with the fact that that's all he does? I love a film with believable characters. He further shows off his charming personality by trying to force feed his girlfriend a dog biscuit. I don't know why. I don't know why she's with him. I don't know why he's doing this, other than to show he's a jerk. Okay, got it. He's a jerk. Moving on. The next day at school, or the next week, or the next month, we see Don's purity pals mocking a professor for teaching evolution. Here's one of these problems I have with the movie. Now, I personally was never one of the abstinence gang, at least not by choice. Um, but if somebody can actually resist the temptation in today's world and wants to save themselves from marriage, be it for religious or personal reasons, more power to you. I got no problem with that. I, I think that everybody's allowed to live their life the way they choose to, provided it doesn't directly impact another person's way of living. And saving yourself from marriage harms nobody, so kudos to you. But this movie 
does nothing but make these people look like idiots. And these people who had pledged themselves. It makes them look like they belong in a cult. It makes them look stupid, self-righteous. It introduced this concept in order to prevent the girl from having sex. Okay. But then it did nothing but hammer on that concept as stupid. Like, the writers were like, okay, we need a reason why she hasn't had sex by, like, the age of 16. Because, you know, every teenage girl loses it by 16 unless they take an abstinence pledge. So, we'll put in the abstinence pledge thing, but we don't want people to think that we actually support that kind of bull. So, we'll make sure that everybody who takes the abstinence pledge looks like complete idiots. Yes! Perfect! That's just... I am offended, and I'm not even in that group of people. Thanks, movie. Now, the romantic tension between Dawn and her almost boyfriend has been mounting, to the point where she has to call him and tell them they can't see each other anymore. We're gonna ignore the oddity of them talking on their cell phones in the gym locker rooms with teachers watching on, because every school district I've ever seen totally promoted the use of cell phones in school. She says they can't hang out anymore, not even in large groups of people, because they're attracted to each other. Okay. Problem here is, even if you're saving yourself for marriage, that implies you're going to get married. Spending time with somebody you like is often a necessary step on the path to marriage. People who choose abstinence are still allowed to date. They can even kiss. <gasps> and see, this just proves that the filmmakers have absolutely no idea that the subject matter they have chosen to revolve the first half of their movie around. The first half of the movie is obsessed with this abstinence thing, and yet they have no clue what they're talking about. Because the guy agrees. No, I agree. We're attracted to each other. That can't be right. We have to stay away from each other from now on. God wouldn't approve of us liking each other, because we like each other, and that's wrong. So Don tries to go and have a serious conversation with her stepbrother about these conflicted feelings she's having now, and he immediately tries to have sex with her. Classy guy. Which causes her to run off to the woods and meet up with the almost boyfriend again, and then the two of them go swimming out to the sex cave. Okay. So all it takes for her to shrug off this mission from God of never hanging out with this boy again that she had like 10 minutes ago was her stepbrother being a sleaze bag, and now her morals are just, you know, screw it. Let's go out to the sex cave. Now, in her defense, she makes it very clear, even when they get into the sex cave, she doesn't want to have sex. Why are they going to the sex cave? That's what it's for. I mean, wouldn't you, wouldn't you even just be worried about the reputation? What if people saw you? This is the popular sex cave where all the kids go. Wouldn't you be worried if somebody saw you near or in the sex cave? They'd assume you were having sex. Then your reputation would be ruined. Don't, I... <laughs> The choice of location is stupid. Her throwing away what she believes is the right and pure thing to do because her stepbrother's a sleaze bag is stupid. Fine, forget having logical consistency. We're trying to move a plot along. Let's just do it. Thank you for watching WTF Cinema. Until next time, what the f man?